Welcome to Woodbury and welcome to season three, The Walking Dead. Every single character ranked. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Entertainment. And here we are going through 35 characters in season three. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Sorry, Carol. Although technically she could be bad and ugly. But she, anyway. She definitely is. She's not first up on our list, but she's not far from it. But let's move in to character 35. It's Donna. Look, Donna literally only appeared just so she could be bitten on screen and die. That is her sole purpose of being on this show. And so we can maybe get a little bit of uh, tension between Tyrese and Alan. So for me, Alan. Don Donna is the worst character in this season and it's not even close to be fair so I'm putting on 35th place we're yeah. putting on 35th yeah, place we are putting her there anybody with a brain should be putting her in 35th place I wonder where Trev's Chan put her in his list if he did a list 9.95 out of 10 character there uh, what's that all about but uh... yeah look she died I mean she, she was on screen for about 2 seconds then she died coming in at number 34 with Dr. Stevens not quite Dr. Stevie Richards, but it's... Um, it's it's White Sox. It's Dr. Stevens, the doctor from Woodbury. I believe she transitions to... Not a male, but I believe she transitions to... <laughs> <laughs> I think she joins... Does she not join the prison at the end of season three? Or does she get shot? I don't know. Either way, well, like... Join the dictatorship. It's like getting neutered, so to speak. So. I mean, she just patched a few people up, right? And she says to the gov... She tried to help the governor raise bad eye. Oh, say bad eye. is non-existent eye. Look, she was just there. Well, his eye was there, but it was hoovered. It was humped. Look, night. she was a doctor. Well, I mean, let's move on. Not a fucking nomics, but here's a doctor of... Dishes. It's Carol in 33rd place. Now, people will say Carol became a badass in season three, but, I mean, really, what did she do apart from sitting around, be helpless, fucking get T-Dog killed, not offer any support yeah, to the Yeah, maybe group. there was a new brand of fairy liquid in the prison that I wasn't aware of, but that I wouldn't describe that as badass, would the, you? The only thing she really did was basically tell Meryl, I mean, you're not really wanted here. And she did it from the safety of the prison when everyone else is around. So How great would it have been if we all just slit her throat with his big fucking hand? I would have paid to see it. I would. I, 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 yeah. I'd go back and change the script now. See Horrible you. character. Horrible character. Hater. Actually hater. 30 seconds. Okay, very good. I think you've got a very good case for, to make for Carol to be near the bottom of every season. Yep. Obviously, I can't really speak for later seasons, but first three seasons, she's been one of the worst characters on every, every season. Easily. Probably season two the most. I think her and Carl... I mean, probably a tie just for how fucking annoying they were. Or maybe Laurie as well, because she was... She was quite annoying. I mean, too. yeah. Anyway, let's, let's move into the next Laurie, one. Let's see where Laurie finishes. It'll be interesting. In 32nd place, we have Ben. Big Ben. Ben, the son of Donna and Alan. He gets sniped out by Meryl. Good he death. actually takes one for the governor. I mean, he just... <laughs> I don't think he necessarily meant it. It's not like he was a sergeant at arms and he was taking one for his prez. He wasn't a tech I'm saving Ryan a clay. And Brian. Um, he, he pretty much just happened to be walking past the governor while Meryl was lining up his shot, and then boom, that's it for Ben. Not a lot to say about Big Ben. Speaking of big people, in 31st place, we have Big Tony. He is the first My of... Big Tiny, big man. Oh, Big Tiny? Ah, well, say shit. Big Tiny, Big Tony, Big Death didn't last very long. He is the first of the prisoners to bite the dust, and I don't even know if it's a necessary kill. We just see that... The other prisoners are not really convinced that he should stay alive, I guess, after he was um, you know, scratched with a walker and Tomas basically gets a matchet and a machete. No, a matchet. A, a, matchet, Jeez, a fucking hatchet or a machete. It was a combination of the two. Uh, well, maybe it was a... You know, I was covering both ends. Anyway, he strikes him not once, not twice. Shitload of times, actually. And from this moment, I think just from this alone, Rick looked at Tomas and thought, you know what? Fuck this guy. Because with this Tomas guy, based on what he'd done to Big Tiny here, would he not just waltz in and do the same to Herschel if he knew he'd been bitten? Exactly. Thankfully, he never got to be Hersh. And he also, I mean, after the scene after, like, where you've got the visual where he's just, like, standing there shaking, he's got the blood all over him after, like, butchering a guy that he spent the last eight months locked inside a fucking cafeteria with. You'd think these two would be bonding, two would be close, and he just killed him like he was nothing. Like so a dog. I think this is what essentially said to Rick, you know what, I can't trust this guy. I can't trust this motherfucker. Right, 30th place, Lieutenant Wells, big fat guy. This guy did not strike me as a lieutenant. I know he was severely injured, but he came across a jobber. I'm surprised he's even this high up. I'm surprised he was the head of the table. 
Head of the table. But by the end of it, it was just a head in the governor's room. No, no I just didn't rate this guy. Not that any of the military guys were particularly great. We probably got to know any of them. But this guy was shite. His big fat fucking melon head. I mean, they were all cannon fodder. He, looked, he, he looked like the guy from Man vs. Food. And he, he ended up being in a tank. What can we really say? Cannon fodder here for Woodbury. Right. 29th place. We've no, been... but it's kind of mad that Woodbury easily took out um, the, the army, but they couldn't take out Carol and a fucking bunch of dishwashers. Well, yeah. No, I see you. That shit sparkle. It's actually embarrassing. 29th like. place, we've got Tim. Tim. Um, Tim in 29th place. Let's just mention Crowley in 28th place. Both the same ca- character, kind of. If you could it, differentiate between these two at home, I'll give you a fiver. I believe Tim was the Asian guy. Well, that I mean... My money was on two straight straight white males, and you've just whipped it, the ace card here. Nah, I'm girl. pretty sure Tim was Asian. I would bet money on Tim being Asian. Like, would you would you bet money on Big Tiny being black? <laughs> I would, I. All right. That's a banker. That's a banker. Right, 27th place, we've got Karen. Um, doesn't really do much. Season four is her time to shine, or cook. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Walter White we're going to make some meth here someone um, cooked we're going to make a mess more like yeah I mean Karen basically what did she what did she really do I think she slept with the governor in the first half of the season and then second half my son can't fight he's got asthma I mean that was pretty much it for Karen but did she sleep with the governor someone did I'm going to say it was or was it the woman from the library who we have not put on this list who's what's her, from the library Woodbury had a library all right Meryl was reading books. Aye, it doesn't mean it was a library. What are you on about? He even says to Herschel, Woodbury had a pretty good library. Oh, why? Did he say to me? He said to fucking Herschel, he didn't say to me. I Did you watch the show or not? Right. About ten years ago. Aye, <laughs> a library. Well, he did, right? I actually pay attention when we do this shit. Aye, uh, 26th place, we've got the cross, the fucking female Daryl, Haley. Kill, uh, dead, um, good night. Not a bad character, but like, again, literally... You could argue quite low down. Yeah, but she wasn't given much time. True. We're not supposed to go over the wall. That's not how we do things here. Uh, she gets taken out by, I want to say, who killed Was it Rick? I, I think it was Rick. Might have been Rick. Um, Rick's a good guy. I mean, yeah, I think she was only like 18 or something like that. Rick killed Young him. pop and just gets fucking put down. Right, 25th place, we've got Andrew. Uh, Rick, put this guy down. Yeah, um, and I, just, I don't know, Andrew's surviving and then disappearing for a few episodes and then coming back like a one-man army. I, I don't think this was necessary. Yeah, it was very overbooked, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, why would he be so hell-bent on getting back into the prison? Wouldn't the guy just be wanting to try his life on the outside and see what he's got? Why did he think it was a good idea to try and sneak back into the prison and take out his entire group? Yeah, because he's a... Cause, cause I, I, I didn't get it. Like, I mean, not a bad character by any means, but... He's here, 25th. Right, Gorgulio, 24th. Gorgulio. What's I, your name? He was in one scene and I actually thought he... I ain't going to lie to the governor. Seeing a scene with Michael Rooker, Gorgulio almost stole the show. He was like, fucking... Nah, you know. I ain't lying to the governor, man. Hmm. I wish you didn't say that, boy. How'd you say your name again? Gorgulio. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Gorgulio shot. Nah, I, I like Gorgulio. Nice wee kid. Yeah, this guy could have made it. Deed though. 23rd place, we've got Sasha. High, incredibly high. Money, bitch, honestly. Yeah, n- nothing, I don't think there's any, I don't think she's got any sort of like redeemable qualities. She's not likable. No, if this was a list who looks most like Xenomorph aliens, she'd be fucking number one, but it's not. It's, you know, it's just the best character, so it's 23rd. Polar opposite to Tyrese. Just a depressing bastard. Tyrese is like happy go lucky. Yep. Definitely. Right, uh, 22nd place, we've got Mr. Alan Key. Um, this guy. I mean, he, he had the chance to kill the governor and save his own life, and he, his arse went. Yeah, he, he could have done it. Like, if he killed the governor, I'm sorry, but it's not like Martinez and Shepard's going to kill him. Is he, are they not? Well is, well, is it not a risk worth taking anyway? No? I don't think so. I mean, Wait, what, what do you mean? He fucking got killed? Hold on, he wanted revenge against the prisoners for killing his son. Why the fuck should he kill the governor? Because the governor just killed like 35 will, people. He was on the governor's side until the governor killed those people. He was agreeing with the governor, calling them uh, right. pathetic and the governor, cowards. The governor had killed like 20 people and then he pointed the gun at them and the governor just dropped them. Aye, right, so who's in the wrong here? Fucking Alan, because he should have killed him. How? Right, the governor's killed all of Woodbury. Aye, because they didn't want to fight. Alan did. And he should take that risk. 
He's not the one that fucking ran away. I guarantee you, the governor would have been happy to keep Alan Schubert and um, Martinez alive. He didn't even know Alan's name. And he'd have rocked back into the prison with those four. I think he would have. Nah, I think they all would have. I think their arse would have dropped. Right, Oscar, this guy, he climbed onto a prison bus at Woodbury and got shot by Shane. Fuck, Shane (laughs) killed killed this guy. Uh, We thought Randall was Shane's last kill, but he's definitely not. He's back. It was Oscar. I, get, I mean, he was—he was, he was all right. He was likable. He had to be story of it. Hey, man, we're not like that. We're good people. I ain't gonna go out like that. Uh, I mean, he stood up to Rick, unlike Axel, who kind of. Well, I think it's a valid bit. point for this guy. Like, when you see in prison, there is people that you know are in for hee haw crimes compared to other people. Like, you could clearly see that Tomas was like a, you know, like Heartless a like a drug dealer. Killer. I think Andrew. Andrew struck me as like a hit and run sort of guy, like a robbery. Aye, big, not like the not like the coldest, coldest, but big tiny might have been in just for I don't know beating people up. Maybe muscle. He was muscle. Aye. Uh, for all we know, o- Oscar was maybe in for getting revenge for a loved one. And Axel, I mean, we don't know with that moustache. It could have been anything. He said it was robbery. I think. Aye, did we believe him though? Where, where's the proof? Axel was the guy that wanted to touch up Beth. So what, I mean, what does your paperwork say? Birth Nods. certificate. <laughs> Nods. <Nice. laughs> um, up next, we have, uh, speaking of Beth, we have Beth up next. And a video that we, we will be making on this is, I remember around this time, season three, season four, maybe the, I think even the latter half of season two, people had this fascination with Carl and Beth getting together. And I just, I don't know, I can't fucking unsee it. And I know a, pe- a lot of people also like, kind of criticised the way, how close like Daryl and Beth were getting, but... I mean, come on, Daryl and Beth isn't as fucking weird as Beth and Carl. Like, at least Beth is like an adult, and if she's not an adult in the show, if she's not like eighteen, she can't be far from it. Whereas we're we're literally talking, Carl is he's supposed to be under ten. He's like fucking. What's eight. the legal age in America then? If she's seventeen. No, I still think it's 18, but my, my point is, like... Both, both, but... Uh, what, what's, no, is it worse for Daryl, is it worse for Beth? Well, they'd probably be worse for Daryl, because he's a, he's a male, like, but that's the way the world goes. But anyone with a fucking brain would... What, what's worse, a 40-year-old, like, being in a relationship with a 17-year-old, or a 17-year-old being in a relationship with someone that's under 10? If, if you think it's the fucking... The, for, the former, then I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what I need, I'm not I, saying either's great, like I'm not. But I think the perfect guy to respond to that would be Chris Hansen. No, super man. All right, the guy has no lines. All right, um, I've noticed we've got now. We've put a lot of black people in the the bottom half here. Does that, do we need to rethink this list? No. All right, fair enough. Eighteenth place, we've got Morgan. This guy is incredibly I high. Odd black guy. Yeah. Incredibly high. I actually preferred Shimper over Morgan. I did. Did you? I. Ah, you put Morgan 21st. It was me that bumped Morgan up. <laughs> Fucking boring bastard. I think... Pr- I see rare. Even ma- I'm black. Maybe... I see tomato sauce. Maybe the most overrated Walking Dead character of all... Although I don't know Carol uh, uh, is. Yeah, 33rd place. Yeah. Like great in fighting. I, I would say... I think if he... I, the, the most overrated male Walking Dead character of all time. I agree is that with that. fair? Yep. But then again, Daryl's fucking overrated as well. True. 17th place belongs to Laurie. Dishwasher put on hold this season. You know what? Season two, I thought she was horrible. Season three, I actually didn't really mind her. I just felt a bit sorry. I don't think she was. She fucking died. I don't think she was. No, I don't think she was that bad in season three. She she didn't annoy me like she did in the first two seasons. It's weird though. Season two ended with her giving Rick the cold shoulder. Season three was Rick giving her the cold shoulder. Well, a lot can happen in eight months. But um, no, Laurie didn't really bother me that much in season three, and then she kind of dies. It's weird because season one, season two would have been. Having a party if Laurie died. But by the time she died in season three, I actually no, felt, no. felt a bit bad for her. Like, so, yeah, this is what it is. Then she came, I didn't really like her ghost arc when she came back as a ghost and Rick could see her. I see dead people. Morgan sees red. R- Rick sees cunts that are dead. It's like, what the hell? What do we have going on here? But yeah, 17 for and Laurie. Tomas basically six, bang in the middle of this list. Tomas, 16th sees a machete straight down his dome. I thought Tomas was a good character. I mean, I, I like Tomas as a an evil bad guy. You would never want him in your group. Uh, probably, is he the worst person that we've seen so far in The Walking Dead? I would say so. I, I would say he's probably the worst person we've seen in terms of, yeah. like, 
um, evil or being just being bad in general. I don't, I don't think anyone would come close to him. Oh, well, I mean, maybe people would say Ed, maybe. Well, if, 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 you know, if this, if if the if the if the rumors are true about Ed, I uh, say Ed's worse than so, fucking I Thomas. Mean, it could be Ed, but I mean, it, it might not be Ed. It could be Thomas. A VAR but, check it. We, we don't, we don't know. But I mean, uh, Thomas could possibly at this stage be the worst guy we've encountered in the walking. And another thing that really pisses me off, and this is something that we'll t- discuss from probably in about ten years when we catch up. But I think it's mad how people actually deem Negan as a good guy and the governor as a horrible guy. Yeah, not much of a difference, is there? No. Well, I think there's a bit of a difference, and I would give the nod to the governor, like, based on what we've seen. But anyway, um, let's move into the, the next person on the list. It's Coral. 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 Stepped up a bit. Coral. Uh, definitely not as bad as he was in season two. No. Nope. Still a little bit annoying. And what I will actually say is, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, I actually think from season... I think from the halfway point of season four, he's actually all right. Just took him to grow up. Hate him. I mean, well, season one, I didn't really mind. I mean, he was just there. Season yeah. two, fucking arsehole. I mean, season three, he just felt like, still felt like an arsehole for season two, but not as bad, not as annoying. But season four, you know, he's began to, he's began to step it up, and he, he feels like a, an important member of the group, someone that can actually contribute and hold his own. So, yeah, no, I, can, I don't mind, Carl. If you're good enough, you're old enough. Exactly. Unless you're a pedophile. But anyway, right, 14th place, Tyrese. The highest black man. Oh, no, no, the second highest black man. And the third highest black person in general. Yep. Uh, all right. I see quite high. I'm sorry, Tyrese, mate. No, I think it's quite high, but, I mean, is there anyone really that... You know, I think I would have put Carl above Tyrese. Yeah. Probably, uh, yeah, you did. There you go. I think you've made a mess of this list, I think. If I made a mess of this list, right? Uh, anyway, no, but, dog No, but what, what, let's talk a little bit about Tyrese. What does a guy offer apart from smashing people with a hammer? No, it's mad. I, I, I reckon if you it put... It looks like Kimbo Slice. I think if you put a poll up, right, who's better between Tyrese and T-Dog, I think disproportionately people would vote for Tyrese. Yeah. I think T-Dog's way better. Yeah, T-Dog, yeah. T-Dog doesn't get enough love. Anyway, let's give him some love. T-Dog is in 13th place. Unlucky for T-Dog, and it was also kind of unlucky that he died in this, um, this season. But you know what? When you've got walkers coming for all angles and you have to team up with Carol the dishwasher, then your plate's probably going to be, you know, messy and broken. His neck got ripped apart like a fucking kinder egg, man. Honestly, just disintegrated. Uh, and he sacrificed himself to save Carl. So, Carl. Car- Carol. So, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I like T-Dog. It's a shame because we were told we were going to get... There's a lot more to come for this character going into season three. I would have milked the fence back then. They lied to us. They absolutely lied to us. But this was during the period where you could only have one black guy. So therefore, Oscar replaced T-Dog. God damn Tyrese right. replaced Oscar. And so on, and so on, and so on. So on, and so forth. And then when Bob showed up, I mean, you knew one of them was going to die soon. Boom. Right, 12th place, Axel. Axel Rodden. He's probably right. a bit high, like, I mean. <laughs> it probably is, but I think his death pretty much elevating them up here. Yes, yeah, death came out of nowhere. You know, you know why I didn't like my brother? He didn't give me any money. <laughs> sniped. Oh, he wasn't even sniped. It was like an og, an og. We a a free a free timeser, a free scoper. I don't think the governor we a bad eye. Oh, a bad eye. I don't think the governor we one more can I should be able to pull this show off. But he did. Although to be honest, Big Boss would have pulled this off. Aye, but he's no he's no the governor. Governor's no him. No, I know, but I mean, just goes to play. Right, let's talk about a whining bitch. Eleventh place, Glenn. Quite high. <sighs> You know, I, I, what, a, what this character, what a fall from, from Grace. I, I love Glenn, season one. Definitely one of the best characters I in the show. I don't think he ever rediscovers his fucking mojo. It, it's, all, it's always like resting bitch face Glenn. I don't think he's as, I don't think he's as annoying. I, don't think, I wouldn't say he's as annoying in season four, five, and six as he is in three. No. Because obviously in three, he's pissed off because of what happened to Maggie. But I still don't. I still think best Glenn is season one Glenn. Yeah, shadow. Of, yeah. It's almost like as soon as he finds Maggie, that's all he cares about. Yeah, Maggie, nice. Maggie. There's nothing else in life over than Maggie. Talking to Maggie, tenth place into the top ten. Maggie sits in tenth place. You said our best season, season two. We're going down, downtown. Well, I think it is. 
yeah, I think she's all right in this season. You know, stepping up to the task of being a pretty important member of the group. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably the only female that was at capable of handling herself until Michonne joins. Yeah, the I, only one, the only female that really pulled any weight. I know, I would agree with that. Now you can, I think you can, I think you can say that look, Laurie's pregnant. I don't expect her to be helping you take down the prison. What the fuck is Carol's excuse? The dishes have got to be clean. They've got a sparkle, man. Right, nine, Milton, that little scientist. I feel like we're actually beginning to move into the good characters now. Yes, Milton, I, I enjoyed. Milton. I liked Milton. I mean, I, I, I thought he got, I didn't, his death was sad. So, I mean, yeah, he, the way he goes out gets bit by, well, he doesn't get bit. This he guy is so much better than Eugene, but like you said, people would fuck Eugene like 99 to 1. Yeah, people probably don't know who Milton is, but Milton was a way better character than Eugene. And, like, I think the, I think Milton was portrayed realistically. How smart you are. I think, I think Milton was portrayed realistically about yeah. how a smart guy would be. And I like the dynamic between Milton and the governor. See, like, Eugene and, and Abraham, it's just it's so fucking comic booky and so forced. I'm smarter than We're going to do this, Abraham, because I am smarter than you. I am, I am, uh, what's my name? <laughs> you know, like, fuck off. Okay, Potter, uh, I'm a retard going to put my M16 down. Like, I like Milton. Was he, he, he couldn't, he, Milton maybe could have saved the world. I don't know, he was trying to, find out what would cause this. He wasn't really the doctor, but he was like the scientist guy that was trying to, I guess, trying to help, trying to find a cure maybe, trying to find out what happened to these people, the biters, as they called them at Woodbury. But, you know, in the end, he had to pick a side and he decided that he wasn't going to pick the governor and that ended up getting him killed. So, yeah, uh, Milton, I think, would have made a good addition to Rick's group if he if he made it that far, but, you know, he didn't. So, unfortunately didn't. for him. Eighth place, was shown did make a good member of Rick's group. I think what helps here our story arc with Merle. Um, yeah. And also like the introduction to the Woodbury and her beef with the governor. Eh. She, You know what? She got given a lot of screen time with the two best characters this season. Yeah, so therefore... Uh, that is and gonna, Rick as well. That is going to help elevate you. I mean, it just is. I do feel, though, that she has... Get, I think she's better in four than she is three. I feel uh, like by the time she... I think she gets a bit more character development in, in four. In three, she was basically just kind of this, like... Bitch face, moody, samurai sword wielding, you know. A bit darker, Sasha. Aye, but. But could actually do stuff. I like in season four how she opens up and she begins to like form a bit of a relationship with Carl. And uh, just, uh, yeah, it just seems to be, uh, feels like more of a member of the group, really. And I guess in season three, she's not really a member of the group, so. She's more of an outsider. And just if a that shows. waving bitch. Right, seventh place, we've got Andrea. Give her a big break this season. I'm going to be the lead in Woodbury that's kind of like still prison groupie, original groupie. But she was in there. Did a good job. Death was all right. And you know what? Kind of, it's, it's almost... I don't even know how to explain it, but... Go explain it. I I think you look back at Woodbury and it's, it's just... It is like the best faction, isn't it? Other than like, you know, if you count the original group. But it's by far and away. Well, well, name another faction that comes close to it. Well, that's it. What would be the closest? Like you think of the saviors, right? And I, Negan and Simon are great, but fuck. Oh, Arad, and like all these people here contribute it. You know the likes of Milton, Andrea. Why I Gunner think and Merle. that I believe that would be is the second best faction because it basically shared the screen time with the prison group. Later on, when they start introducing all these factions, there's, like, different groups, and it's, like... It was just better when it was one-on-one, -on -one, when it was Woodbury versus the prison. See, when they get to these later seasons, and you've got to introduce, like, four, five, six different surviving groups. It's just too many groups, and no one really gives a shit. Yeah, I don't know, that is it. Um, but Plus, I, I think it helped to have established characters, such as Andrea and Meryl being Woodbury. Yeah, of course it did. Sixth place, one of those newbies, Martinez. He was in Woodbury. Really enjoyed Martinez. Really enjoy the actor. He does, you know, on Sons, on Walking Dead. I'm sure he's never good stuff, but hey, he delivers every time he's on the screen. He does. I enjoy them. Done a good job. I think he's like the third in command. He's a really good choice. Not for, not second? I'd say he's behind Merle. I mean, I guess he ends up second, like, but initially he's third. Yeah, I'm not denying that, but you, you don't think he's good for a second? 
No, he is. I'm not saying that, but here, he wasn't. Big Martinez, and you know what? I think he's, I think he's bad, but he's not too bad. Well, we've well, seen him and Daryl relate, and they had a little conversation. I, I think Martinez is, is more loyal than he is. I don't think he's a necessarily like evil person. True. I think if maybe Martinez, if he was at the prison group, could have been a, a loyal soldier, soldier to um could have been a loyal soldier to Rick. Who Rick. Knows? It could have been but part uh, of that Rick Tatership. Back to that Rick Tatership, we've got Herschel. He may have lost a leg, but he wanted Rick's ass, damn it. He wanted to join the Rick Tatership. Herschel Yeah, all he did was kiss Rick's ass, but well, I mean it's sometimes he would stand up to Rick. He was like the moral compass. He kinda took over. He was the Dale of season three. And he offered good dialogue. That's what I liked about Herschel. Yeah, I and mean, we're not expecting Herschel to, you know, kill 50 walkers in an episode like some fuckers on here called Trevor. But, here, yeah, dialogue's where it's at. Is dialogue with Merle memorable? Is dialogue, like, when you, like, you remember him first waking up? You remember him talking to Milton in the car park of that, like, meet? You remember him talking you to You want to see Rick? my leg? At least buy me a drink first. <laughs> <laughs> good wee lie now. Really enjoyed that. Right. Milton didn't really... <laughs> no, Milton didn't. was too serious. I don't have any money to buy you a drink. Fourth place is Daryl, and I've got a feeling Daryl, as these seasons goes on, is we're just, going down. Could fourth place? He could go down, but the question, but the problem is, the walking. De- you're killing off good characters each season without really replacing them. So maybe Daryl will just consistently be there. He'll always be in the top ten. I would struggle to see how he goes out the top ten. True, but I mean, season three. Wow, he he does get neutered in this season. He, he gets he, the rub of Merle, but he he gets the 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 rub of the dictatorship as well. Yeah, I mean, let just let Rick be Rick and let Daryl be Daryl. Don't have R- Daryl just be Rick's right hand man. Could see if Shane just kissed Rick's ass. How shit with the first two seasons? I mean, yeah. See if, if Shane just agreed with everything Rick said. No, but Daryl doesn't need to fucking agree with everything Rick says. I mean, he doesn't need the butt heads with him either. Why can't it just be... Like, he never disagreed with him. No, never. Never. Even when it came to fucking trying to save his brother's life, he was like, like fuck him. Oh, maybe you got a point there. He is a bit of a dick. <laughs> We're blood brothers now, Ricky boy. And talking about Ricky boy, into the podium spots, we've got Rick. St. Rick. Rick's a, Rick has a good character, right? As much as he's went through periods where he has kind of annoyed me and he's, he's went through being... I'm a good guy. I Stuff. can't. I can't just lead. It has to be all of us. Then he turns into a slightly, you know, more like evil or version. Oh, I'm a bad guy. Rick Tatorship. You do what I say, or you get the fuck out. I think I prefer Rick. My favorite Rick is like when he's leading, but he's not doing the whole Rick Tatorship. Yeah. See when he's leading, but he values others' inputs. That's when I kind of like Rick. I I think he sucks when he takes a back seat. I'm going to plant some carrots. Nah, man. See Rick doing the farming? And then he's letting like, the likes of fucking Sasha and decide the fate on of the, the council? Group. I mean, come on. Come on. I mean, sitting on the council. If you're a leader, man, you shouldn't be taking a backseat to fucking jobbers. It really is that simple. What's your favourite Rick scene? For this season? Favourite moment for season three? Um... I mean, I like the Tomas kill. I like when he finds out Laurie's dead. Sit um, down with the governor. Sit down with the governor. I like when he knocks out Merle. Uh, I mean, there's so many other shit that goes on with Rick. Like, I mean, Rick is just quite the man. Got Some it. of the scenes were good with Merle when he was discussing the show. You're as cold as I, softs are friendly. Yeah. Well, quite a lot of good stuff with Rick. Rick is the man. But we talk about taking a back seat with Rick. Second place, we never took a back seat, the governor. He is numero uno. Yeah, um, Morris, David Morrissey done a great job as the governor and um, yeah, definitely enjoyed him. I think up to this point, easily uh, a top, would you say maybe top top five? Character? Uh, top, I'd say if, if not top five, top six, top seven. He misses out, right, a number one spot here, but I think for season four he could he could clinch it with only being in like four episodes. He could, and I, I liked when he came back in season four because it kind of like gave him a redeeming arc. It showed that he wasn't all bad, and that in the end he, he kind of was willing to let everything go with the prison group. He just he was desperate to protect his new family, and that ended up obviously coming to a, a collision with the prison group. But I, I don't think the governor is as bad as people make him out to be. No, he's not, man. The governor's a good man. So yeah, Brian. Uh, 
Love Brian, love the governor. For me, he is the best villain the Walking Dead's ever had. Yep. I, I prefer, I, I know people prefer Negan. <sighs> Again, Negan just seems way too comic booky for me. N- Negan just seems like some sort of like Marvel superhero shite, in my opinion. He does. Whereas the governor legit did seem like a, a good bad guy. I just couldn't imagine the governor and Rick tag teaming in a few seasons' time with, with Negan. You know, I mean, look at, like, the go- like, could you have seen the governor and Michonne going to fucking a dead, dead city? Shit like that, after all the damage. He just seems like, Negan's just a, Negan's funny, but the governor's, like, serious. Negan's always, there's always a bit of wit in there, but, numero uno, Michael Rooker, Merle Dixon. You know, the only guy in the top ten, well, not, maybe not the top ten, the only guy in the top six to die. And he made it number one. He could be the only... He probably is the only... Well, actually, no, Shane probably would have got number one, wouldn't he? Last season. So there seems to be a wee trend of people dying and getting number one. Could happen again next season, season four. No, like Michael Rooker, I think he was always going to be number one. See, when you find out Meryl's coming back... Yeah, he was... Stole, he, stole the show, stole the season. I'm not saying the season would have sucked without Meryl, but wow, it, it would have... It would have lost a lot. You think of season three... Pretty, if you think of five moments for season three, he's taken up like three of them. Yeah, I mean, taking Meryl out of season three, I wouldn't say it's the same as taking Shane out of season two, but it would have a massive impact. Yeah, it would. I, I think all my, all, I think a lot of the best moments from season three do feature Meryl. I think the best episode from season three is the Meryl episode. Yep. I know a lot of people prefer Killer Within. And I'm not saying that was a bad episode, it was a good one. But I think the, the Meryl episode was better. Um, I think the, the arc with Meryl and Daryl going out on their own, I thought that was good. I, I liked the um, chemistry between Meryl and the governor, both when they were working as allies and as right-hand man and when they were going against each other. Um, I think Meryl and his, um, his relationship with Martinez, I thought they two had pretty good... Um, chemistry and the, the, the fight scenes as well that they had with the, the biters the show that they were putting on for the, the Woodbury um, citizens the Woodbury people uh, yeah no a great great character sad to see him go it's it's a shame that Michael Rooker wanted out of the show because they originally wanted to bring him back in season 4 I have a feeling that maybe Herschel took his death now you could argue if they're leaving the prison and this is maybe we'll talk more about this when we get to season four. But you could argue they're leaving the prison, and it just doesn't really make sense for a one-legged guy to be, you know, walking around. So was Hershel's number up? Was it always the plan? Yeah, but he had the boot. Or, or could well, I put it, Paul, put it this way, right? Back end of season four, instead of Daryl and Beth, Daryl and Merle getting their own wee episodes. Yeah, how great would that have been? But. I tell you what, Daryl talks about well, why didn't I shoot? Why didn't I shoot the governor? He had Herschel at you know uh, katana point, knife point, <laughs> hostage. If he's got Merle at hostage, Daryl's taking the shot. Not that like yeah, he doesn't value Herschel's life, but would he not be shooting at him to save Merle? Yeah, I mean, put it like that, possibly. But also, would Merle really let himself get into a situation where, where he's, he's on his, where he's on his fucking knees? No, I don't think so. I think he'd have been fucking. I mean, he's got a knife of his own. Yeah. Nah, it wouldn't happen, but it would be This it. fight is going to come down to the very last blade. Anyway, guys, like that's it. Meryl Dixon, number one character for us. Um, Michael Ruger, fantastic actor. It's a shame he wanted it out because I think we would have got a lot more of him in season four. But we got enough of him to give him the top spot for season three. So, yeah, our top five, Meryl, Governor, Rick, Darrow, and Herschel. Um, I think Meryl and the governor and Rick to an extent I think the top three are quite a lot quite ahead of the, the, the other the, the other what 33 people that are on this list so yeah. 32 people so um, yeah top three for me were the big dogs so to speak and I, I agree with the order Meryl, governor, Rick so yeah that's it catch you in the next one guys and uh, yeah we are in season four now and that obviously you can catch those videos on the channel and yeah looking forward to getting to the end of that and we'll be doing the same thing ranking the episodes ranking the deaths ranking the characters and i would say that we're kind of at the point now in the walking dead where we're not really familiar with what happens next i feel we've seen the first three seasons a lot of times i remember i've seen it multiple times yeah we're, we're yeah see uh, yeah definitely definitely 
I've only seen these episodes once. Well, obviously, I've seen moments more than once, but yeah, because we did have we did have the first four DVDs, first four seasons on DVD. Plus, I think when The Walking Dead first came out back then, I, I used to like rewatch the, the episodes when the, after watching them. But then I think past season four, I only watched them once, and you know, they're be- beginning to go off it. But who knows? We're gonna give it a chance. Maybe, maybe, maybe second time around, we'll actually enjoy The Walking Dead a bit more. Maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll appreciate it. Hopefully. More. Anyway, guys, I've that's no a- reason to hate it. I want it to be good. I've got one reason to hate it. That person in 30 fucking third place. And that's it, guys. Carol, the dishwasher, Pellier. Pellier, there. Anyway, guys, till next time. Peace. Ed, Ed, and Eddie.